Okay, good morning, everybody. My name is Peg Ray, and I work for AIB International. Um, today's topic is food safety culture for senior leaders. There's a chat box that you can enter your questions in, and then um, we'll answer them at the end of the presentation. Or I guess you also have the ability to just ask the questions live at the end. So we'll get started now. Senior leaders have responsibilities in an organization that others don't have. Let's look at how those responsibilities relate to food safety culture. So what is food safety culture? Recently, it's become a buzz phrase. Everyone is talking about it. The concept of food safety culture is new, but food safety culture has actually been around since food was first processed outside the home. Think about it. It's the means we use to get product out the door. Now, whether food safety culture is good or bad is another question. Let's start with the word culture. So culture is collective visions and purpose, individual motivations, day-to-day -day communication, team dynamics, empowered decision-making, effective positive management, visible inspiring leadership. So isn't that really what culture is? Industry experts agree with this list, ideas, values, beliefs, and attitudes all contribute to food safety culture. When we put it all together, it's our behavioral norm. It's how we behave. It's what we do. I've been on audits for plant personnel come up to me and tell me they would not buy the product that's produced in the plant. They would not buy their own product? That's scary, and I make a mental note that I would also not buy their product. Even if they've spipped up the plant for the scheduled inspection, there's an underlying current of something wrong that makes me wary. This speaks to their food safety culture. So would you think that such a plant has a good food safety culture? Your answer is probably no. Culture is both visible and invisible. And here's what I mean by that. The visible culture is what everyone sees. This is the top of the iceberg. It's the company vision, strategy, goals, shared values, structures, policies, procedures. We've put a lot of time into how we want things to be. Our vision might even be printed on a coffee mug. It's the way we say we get things done. The invisible culture in our organization is the way we really get things done. There's a lot under the surface that may conflict with what we planned. Those are things like perceptions, beliefs, traditions, norms, and stories. Unwritten rules affect our culture as do values and feeling. How we say we do things and how we really do things likely don't match 100%. So our real food safety culture is at the waterline where the top and bottom of the iceberg come together. I remember inspecting a food plant that received a great IIB score. They were pleased and celebrating. Then the plant manager proudly announced, I guess that time and money we spent shutting down the plant for three weeks and hiring temporary employees to clean it up were really worth it. What was reflected in the score on the day of the inspection is not who they really are. They were putting on a show just to get a score. So what makes a company culture great? Let's look at what makes the company culture a great company culture. One plan I inspected stand out for me. During the open meeting, I asked the plant manager how many people were on the food safety committee. The answer was 500 meaning that a person in that large operation was tasked with maintaining food safety in the plant. During the inspection, during the employee interviews, this plant manager's claim about the 500 was demonstrated to be fact. This speaks to the culture of that operation. So the factors that collect collectively contribute to the culture are the visible environment. It's literally how you look. It's the uniforms, the cleanliness, the factory conditions in the big picture. It's the mood. It's hard to measure, but you can tell when people are down or angry in the plant. We need to spend time with employees to read the mood. Actions and execution. You have written procedures. Do the employees follow them or just wing it? Let's talk about the visible, visible environment in the next few slides. So when we look at this picture, what does this photo indicate about the culture in this food plant? One picture is worth a thousand words. First, we see that senior leaders accept the conditions that are likely not as described in those pretty um, manuals that are used for audits and inspections. We see that they are staging the um, totes for doing um, small ingredient 
way up directly on the floor. So when that bottom tote is dumped into that mixer, any dirt that's on the bottom of that um, tote from the floor is going to go directly in the mixer. We see that they accept setting ingredients directly on the floor. We see that they allow ingredient bins to remain uncovered. We see that it's okay to stage their, these totes that are met, uh, labeled as edible or right next to the trash bin. We see that it's okay to maintain the overheads in an insanitary condition. We see that it's okay to let operational debris accumulate and then just track it all over the floor. So these conditions are indicative of the food safety culture in this plant that's blessed by senior leadership. What about this plant? Food safety culture does extend to the exterior of the facility. IPM or pest control are probably not high on the list of priorities for this location. If you want to truly see the food safety culture in your plant, drive around the whole building to check conditions. Don't just go on the front door that faces the street and looks good because the city enforces curb appeal. What about this plant? What does this tell, tell you about this facility's food culture, food safety culture? Does senior management and this operation hold them to a higher standard than the other two plants? I would say yes. Those floors are clean enough to eat off of. Everything is organized. The people are in clean uniforms, wearing hair coverings. It just overall puts up that good impression that food safety culture is important to these people. It looks like what they're doing is matching what's in those written procedure manuals. The mood is the feeling in the air. It's what you feel. Mood is the feeling and the thoughts about the organization that's adopted by a principle by which to work. For example, how do staff react to certain situations? You may have heard these reactions before. We've been doing this like this for 30 years. It will be all right. Everybody else is doing it. Or, but the other auditors did not have a problem with this. Mood is what people talk about at different levels in the hierarchy at any given formal or informal time. For example, how does staff react to an inspection or an audit? Do they get involved in the inspection? Are they interested in the results? Do they see opportunities for improvement or just see it as a waste of time? Actions and execution. This is what you do. It may or may not match with thoughts that were expressed. Do you know that factory has a corporate and company policies posted in the foyer? Banners depicting goals and achievements, proudly posted certification achievements. However, when you talk to the staff, you find they're disengaged. They don't know what the food safety or quality policies are, or they know them, but they don't follow them. Some companies have very good documentation and written procedures, but this is not translated into what is happening on a daily basis on the shop floor. Your documented food safety program is not your culture, but executing on it says a lot about the culture. Talent is defined as a combination of thoughts plus behaviors, and these bring stability to culture. You want people in your organization that are talented in a way that supports actions which promote food safety. Each person we hire will have a big impact on culture based on the talent they bring to your organization. So just to summarize, food safety culture is the collective of each individual's and group perceptions or beliefs about food safety, their attitude towards food safety, and ultimately their behavior towards food safety, both in a visible or observable and invisible, meaning not observable way. Belief and attitude is below the waterline as we discussed earlier, and behavior is above. We want them to believe in food safety. We want them to have a good attitude, and this leads to good behavior. If you have that employee who says, I won't buy this product, then you need to change that belief. That change will change their attitude, and that change will change their behavior. Okay, we're used to in our food industry, in the baking industry, talking about um, the food science and the science of baking. But now we need to understand some human psychology. Okay, and it's not important that you remember all of these um, psychological terms, just understand the concept. When dealing with people, we need to understand that there are five psychological barriers to a positive food safety culture. When it comes to driving, the rules about speeding are clear, and drivers understand the potential consequences, such as causing a crash, injuring themselves or someone else, or losing their license. Yet thanks to psychological biases, countless drivers break the law every day. 
These same psychological biases can help explain why staff often fail to follow food safety procedures. The first barrier is optimistic bias. This is the technical name for it will never happen to me mindset. When your food business has a clean track record on food contamination, it's hard to imagine the unexpected taking place. Complacency sets in. I've heard it many times in my career. We have never killed anyone yet. And I hope that remains true. But that's an a good example of optimistic bias. Let's say there's a recall by your competitor. A company based on food safety culture would ask and analyze if such a failure could happen to them and then justify why not. And if yes, it could happen to them, they would modify something, educate and train their people to prevent it from happening to them. The second barrier is the illusion of control. This is the belief that there's something special about your business or your leadership of it that makes it immune to food safety breaches. People in general are more afraid of flying than they are of driving, yet the incidence of car crashes are much higher than plane crashes. If you were flying the plane, would your, would your fear be less because you were in control? The third barrier is cognitive dissonance. Sometimes you know the rules but are forced to break them. Cognitive dissonance is the name for psychological unease that follows. It's our conscience, it's our feeling of guilt. It might be that you know you have, have to review the food safety records, but you have a file to report to management instead. For your staff, it might be that they know they have to wear protective gloves, but they're too busy to fetch a fresh box. Such instances are extremely common. Time and again, staff are told to follow certain food safety practices and training that are impossible in practice. Either that or managers ask staff to prioritize a certain behavior before giving them a long list of other jobs to do. All of them are urgent, of course. Attitudinal, attitudinal ambivalence. Yeah, you try saying that. Cognitive dissonance leads to attitudinal ambivalence where staff are unsure of whether or not to follow food safety protocols because of conflicting priorities. I should really be doing X, but Y is more important. It can lead to a culture of cutting corners when it comes to food safety. And if you called your staff on this, they would likely know their mistake immediately. Lack of knowledge is not the problem here. And the fifth barrier is paranoia. Insisting on strict food safety and then micromanaging the behaviors of your staff can be detrimental to motivation. Unless you manage the situation properly, it's easy for staff to feel paranoid that their every move is being scrutinized, that you do not trust them to do their jobs properly. And if you don't trust them, why should they bother? It must be clear that instead of judging your team, you're helping them to understand where and why checks are due to do during a busy schedule. It's about enabling your staff to better meet their responsibilities rather than a lack of trust. You have to keep each employee engaged and energized. Sometimes we find that people are just going through the motions. How do you determine if this is the case? Let's talk about the warning signs that you're just going through the motions with your food safety culture. Following the rules without understanding means that people don't understand the rationale behind food safety policies, processes, and procedures. In most cases, our training addresses what we need to do, but it doesn't address why. Why do we need to do it? Because ARB or GFSI says so is not the reason why. We close the doors to keep pests outside. We wash our hands to prevent path passing pathogens that will contaminate the food we're handling. When we don't know the why, we start not to follow the what. Consistently failing or only just passing and passing inspections and audits is a sign that the operation could be taking higher than expected food safety risks. Consistently failing an audit affects morale in the plant. It's hard to develop a winning culture when you are failing. If your operation is just getting by and senior leadership is happy that you're just getting by, this team is just going through the motions. Developing workarounds to avoid audits or time spent on food safety measures is a pitfall. There's a saying that what, do, what does not get measured does not get done. If we avoid measuring something that we should measure, we can pretend that everything is okay. Let's say you and your food safety plan states, let's say that your food safety plan states to check the metal detector every hour, but the operators are really just checking them every hour and 20 minutes. 
Instead of tightening up your checks and holding the operators accountable to the hourly checks written in your plan, you tweak the food safety plan to require a check only every two hours so that one hour and 20 minute check becomes just fine. That's a workaround. You're diluting the food safety culture of your plant. Everyone in the plant sees that food safety is not as critical as you told them in training. Objecting to unannounced audits. This is often an indication the company does not have confidence in their food safety programs. Are you audit ready every day? To be able to say yes is a strong measure of your food safety culture. If your answer is no, it means you don't have confidence in your food safety culture. You feel the need to dress up what you're doing to have the audit. Remember that aside from what was done at the height of the pandemic, FDA generally shows up unannounced. They will see what your real food safety culture is. Remember that your customers are buying your product every day, even when you have not dressed up the plant for a food safety audit. That customer is relying on you to be doing food safety 100% of the time, not just before audits. Failing to determine root causes of identified problems. This means you're focusing instead on spending time, effort, and resources to address symptoms to achieve quick, short-term results. Using the findings of the inspection as an action list without addressing the underlying causes means the issue will not go away. Consequently, this approach results in another list of similar findings and no value is added to the process. Painting a piece of rusted equipment may create a short-term feeling of accomplishment. The equipment may look good for a while, but eventually the paint will flake off and you could have a bigger problem. You spend your time, money, and efforts on corrections and not the corrective actions. If you use an audit as a punch list and mark, yes, I fixed the oil leak and fail to address why the equipment is leaking, then you are not determining the root cause for corrective action. Failing to learn from mistakes is another sign of just going through the motion. Companies that have strong food safety culture don't accept mediocrity. They strive to improve and learn from their mistakes. You don't want to be average. Pretending. What this stands for is the preparation of a facility for announced inspections or audits in order to pass them and then revert back to their hidden ways and means of doing things. This behavior clearly demonstrates that the facility personnel what's required. However, they don't, they comply only when the inspector is coming in for a verification. That is, they prepare the facility to pass the inspection or audit for the sole purpose of getting a good rating and a certificate. However, that's not the end of it since your ultimate goal is to get a reward, such as a bonus. Your goal is not to promote a food safety culture. This plant is faking it. They're simply cheating. The inspector is of no good or use because he or she does not see the real thing and cannot make real observations. The plant is showing faked compliance. The consequences can be and are disastrous when such a facility's faked culture compliance catches up. If senior leadership is pretending to be better than the plant really is, they're just going through the motions. This team is diluting itself and everyone else in the company. So ask yourselves, does your company exhibit any of these signs? Do you know how much this is costing you? What are the opportunity costs of not having and living strong and positive food safety culture? Everyone lives in a food safety culture, but what level of food safety culture? Let's look at this further. There are a number of food safety culture models that can be used. It's not on the scope of this presentation to discuss each of these in detail. However, we've listed some of their common attributes. Regardless of which one you choose, they all have some commonalities. Commonalities, management commitment, learning and behavior reinforcement, food safety measurements, and metrics. First, we're gonna talk about management commitment. In fact, we're gonna talk about senior level management commitment. Do you walk the talk? One thing about senior management, when you go out in the plant, you're highly visible. All the eyes in the plant are on you. What is the boss doing when she or he is out in the plant? Your actions speak volumes to everyone about how seriously you take food safety. If you see a glove on the floor, don't step over it, pick it up and properly discard it. If you see a door to the open, outside left open and no one's around, close it. Wash your hands at the plant entrance where everyone else is expected to wash their hands before entering the plant. Wear your hairnet properly. Cover all of your hair. Empty pockets above the waist. In other words, follow your company's good manufacturing practice that you expect everyone else to follow. Remember that you lead by example. Nurture 
a positive food safety culture by removing barriers that impact the ability of individuals from contributing to food safety. Make it easy for everyone to do things right. Remember the picture with the minor ingredient containers on the floor? Provide a stand so people can keep containers off the floor. Consider removing barriers that impact the ability of managers from contributing to food safety. For example, if the production manager continu continuously overrules the quality manager regarding health stock, then it's time to step in and take leadership. Focus on strengths. Too many times management focused purely on weakness. When developing a positive culture, we need to provide more balance. It's often more encouraging to focus on the strengths and recognize the wins. Winning improves morale. It's been proven that positive reinforcement has a bigger impact on nurturing staff engagement than one that tends to focus on failure and weaknesses. I remember a plant manager who would berate all members of his team for minor issues, issues on a report, even though the facility received a high score. That plant manager focused only on the negative and didn't celebrate the positive. Audits and inspections were perceived as negative events and the team hated them. Signing the HACCP or HARP-C plan shows commitment. One of the most difficult parts of managing a food safety plan is to throw away product or reprocess it if a CCP or PC fails as it costs the company money. A proactive way for top management to show commitment to food safety is to sign the HACCP or HARP-C plan, committing to the established corrective actions. This forces the manager to critically evaluate what they're committing to. If you're not following a CCP or PC, it means the product produced in that time frame is unsafe. It must be destroyed. Your signature indicates your commitment to maintaining this level of food safety. We need to set SMART goals that we can measure. These are common food safety metrics we use to measure our performance in the food industry. Are you getting better or worse on food safety complaints? Are you getting better or worse on non-conformances on your GFSI or AIB or whatever third-party audit you may use? Are you maintaining CCP or PC compliance? What percent of the time are, is the CPC, oh, that's a mouthful, CCP or PC not, not met? Are you maintaining 100% of staff who've completed food safety training or is it less than 100%? What is your supplier approval rate? Do your customers give you a high rating? Inspection, audit, and housekeeping scores, how are they being measured and managed? And what's the total cost of compliance? Yes, there's a cost of compliance. It does cost money if things don't go well. So measure what you're doing. We interviewed some companies that have strong food safety cultures. We asked them what they've done in their plants that they think all plants should do. Here's one that really jumped out at us. A couple of plants said, we authorize our employees to shut down the line if the product's unsafe. We discussed that at the monthly plant meeting. These plants that were interviewed actually had two events of line shutdowns in six, month, six months as a result of this policy. Think about that. If the, that employee hadn't shut down the line, that product might have left the facility and been in the headlines as a product recall. This is a powerful statement about how important food safety is to senior, senior management that they empower everyone to shut down a line for food safety reasons. Human beings are like electricity when it comes to following the path of least resistance. We'll generally do the right thing when it's easier to do the right thing than do the wrong thing. Think about the employee who touched a pallet and then needs to wash their hands because they're dirty. In order to do so, they need to climb under two conveyors, cross over a third conveyor, and walk another 100 feet to the nearest hand wash sink. How likely is it those dirty hands are going to get washed? What about the employee who tears a glove and goes to the box of gloves to get new ones and the box is empty? Look at what you expect people to do and facilitate their ability to do it. Put sink scenarios where people may need to wash their hands frequently to enable that expected behavior. Ensure that enough gloves to get through the shift, day, or whatever are readily available at all times to allow torn gloves to be replaced. In short, make it easy to always do the right thing. Reinforcements help keep the message ongoing and targeted. Don't just put up a sign that says, think food safety. That's way too generic. For example, put up a sign that says, watch for metal to metal wear. It's specific and focused to help prevent an issue. Move those signs around so no one's desensitized. We tend to ignore what we see every day in the way of signage. Put signs in the middle of the floor. Don't put them by the time clock where folks are distracted about clocking in and clocking out. 
think about using incentives to help develop a strong food safety culture. Give incentives for using the pest siding log. For the, those of you who might not know, a pest siding log is a log that's put in a place where everybody in the facility has access to it. So they can report if they see a bird, a mouse, insect activity, or whatever. So somebody working on third shift might see a road running across the aisle in the warehouse. This is a place for them to make that known. So the person in charge of IPM at that facility will look at that the next morning and make sure it gets addressed. So if you give incentives for using that, that goes a long way to make sure that people do use it. Celebrate improvements for internal self-inspections, AIB scores, GFSI audit results. Customer complaints are the voice of your customer. Post food safety related complaints to let employees know what your customers are saying. Celebrate the reduction in food safety complaints in a year over year measurement. For example, celebrate that we had less foreign material complaints this year. This acknowledges that efforts people put into the foreign material control program paid off. Remember positive reinforcement. One company uses the company swag when they catch someone doing right. This is the opposite of the typical gotcha that's so often used in catching someone doing something wrong. You get a lot more mileage for the positive recognition. One of the companies we interviewed gives a food safety tip for every meeting that explains the why. For example, make sure doors are closed and effectively sealed to keep pests outside. Keep ingredient containers off the floor to prevent picking up floor debris on the bottom that could be transferred into the product. One company uses TV monitors with changing messages every week. This keeps the messaging fresh and moving forward. We have a program at AIB where we come in and take videos of your plant to create tips specific to your operation. The name of this is Gimme Five, as in give me five minutes of your time. We stage scenarios in your plant that you consider as key issues and speak about the right thing to do in that instance. Consistency drives improvement. Be consistent with the signals and messages sent to the company team. It will be confusing to your employees if the message constantly changes. Always support food safety no matter what the circumstances. When we make exceptions to the actions we take regarding food safety, we erode food safety culture in the operation. Change management is critical. Create an environment where people can be honest and open without fear of repercussions. Recognize that there's an information network of change agents in your facility. You want to empower people in the facility to want to change. Ask yourselves, where are we now and where do we want to go? There's only one effective way to create a complete picture of the current state of the organization, and that's by meeting with the stakeholders. Of course, this includes employees and managers from every department at every level. But to really ensure that your reality is captured, be sure to include external viewpoints as well. Feedback from suppliers and customers, even your own board members will often provide perspective that differs from the views of those who are too close to the problem. This data collection will take many forms like town hall meetings, personal interviews, small group discussions, questionnaires and surveys. Quality culture surveys by an independent organization against industry averages can be considered. However, the key to reliable feedback is to create an environment that encourages two-way communication and where people understand they can be honest and open without fear of repercussions. A huge benefit of these activities is the opportunity to identify those individuals within your company who are already aligned with the new direction. These are people who will serve as your banner carriers and good examples to their peers. The term we frequently hear in the business press is change agents. Finding a group of like-minded employees who embrace the new direction and are committed to driving it forward is critical to the success of any change initiative. Even a hierarchical, hierarchical organization, the, bil the ability to create an informal network of change agents will drive success. And these people must represent every department from HR to R&D and every level from VP to line worker. So our key takeaways are, without top management commitment and support, there's no such thing as true food safety culture. You can't manage what's not measured. Develop those SMART goals. Educated employees and not merely trained ones will lead to a true food safety culture and greater returns. Everyone in the facility must be engaged in food safety and make it automatic in how they do their job. There's no set equation for judging food safety culture, but these are a few tools that can be used to gauge it. 
Once strengths and weaknesses are assessed, adjustments can be made to successfully improve areas of concern. Talent times investment equals strength. Invest time and education in talented individuals to achieve consistency and performance. This isn't a magic formula, but it helps to have individuals that are passionate about food safety. Who you hire is who you have to work with. Create a talent culture, with the talent being knowledge and passion for food safety. 